was 10 years old. I was seven years old. I was eight years old when my sister Taylor was and my sister Erin was. When my brother Travis was diagnosed with meningocarcinoma. Diagnosed with leukemia. Diagnosed with medulloblastoma. I was 14 years old when she passed away. I was confused, I think. Like, didn't see my mom for a while because my brother went like directly to have brain surgery, mm -hmm. like overnight that night. And then I just was kind of like staying with a friend for a while. So I think I was just confused and didn't really like understand the severity of it. Yeah, I would say the same. I mean, I didn't really understand what was going on. I just felt like my parents told us at the hospital all day and then my parents told us in the car we got to go home um and they were crying when they told us so i just didn't really know what that meant like i knew it was bad enough if my parents were crying um but yeah i was confused i mean automatically sent off to a friend's house my grandma came over and yeah like you guys were saying i was super confused and like just was kind of like I don't even remember how it was explained to me, I just remember them saying that she was sick and I was so confused about why we couldn't still go on vacation. Like My mom said the first time that I went to visit her, I asked if I could catch it because I was really worried. Each year, 175,000 children under the age of 14 are diagnosed with cancer worldwide. Cancer is the leading cause of death by disease in children past infancy in the U.S. In the U.S., there are currently 420,000 childhood cancer survivors and a family to match every single one. Intensive treatment can last for months and sometimes years, which can lead to financial burdens on families and affect roles for each member of the family and lead to schedule changes. Each of these things can be felt by well siblings. Like I didn't get to go home for like several weeks. It was like living out of a bag at a friend's house because my parents were, you know, divorced and my dad lived out of the state. So yeah, didn't really like have like a good family like unit at that time, um, and had a, a ton of like issues with like jealousy and not understanding why I couldn't have my mom and. Um, why she couldn't like tuck me in every night, like stuff that a little girl like just desires, and I just was confused why I didn't have it. Yes. Yeah, mine would be pretty similar. I was just confused on like why my parents weren't there. Um, both my parents still worked, so they would try and switch off and on with who would stay at the hospital for a week and who would be home at night. Or if my dad was working all night, my mom had to be in the hospital, we would be at a friend's house. Um, we, it's my little sister and I, we would still go to school. We would, I mean, still try and do normal kid stuff, but it was just, we never got to see our parents. We never got to see our sister. Um, we would go to clinic with my sister on the days that she had to get chemo, so we would be at the hospital all day. It was like our second home. Um, I mean, it was mostly just, responsibility at home. Yeah. Like, I remember having to learn how to do laundry when I was 10 because my parents were home all the time to do it. Or to help take care of my little sister and like to help her better understand it like when I didn't even understand it. And, um, Due to the many changes happening at home, things like grades and school relationships can often suffer as well. <clears throat> I think I was in like third grade, third or fourth grade, and I remember, like, I would go to the counselor at school, like, she would come get me out of class, so I could talk about it, um, and I, I, like, started having, like, an IEP, like, for reading comprehension, yeah, and then, like, I think it specifically had to do with that, because then I went on to, like, like, graduate from nursing school with honors, like, I back what my little sister did, yeah, like, she yeah. needed a ton of extra help.
health and just like behavioral stuff as well. She needed a lot more attention. Emergency visits to the hospital take precedent over everything, which forces well siblings to give up other activities and put their needs last. Everyone else's plans went out the window. Like it didn't matter if I had like a birthday party or something, you know, I was gonna go to Six Flags that day or I, I mean specifically I remember. Or just like my mom was gonna take me to get a manicure, like I couldn't do it because Travis had to go to the hospital and she was a single mom and like there was no one that could go with him. And so it was just pretty much anything that fell his needs. He was life he was so ill, like came above everyone else, even my mom, so like she sacrificed everything. Although families are often supported, individual support for well siblings often doesn't occur until there's a visible problem already happening. I think as a kid, I didn't feel supported. Um, when I think back to it now as an adult, I was like so in the dark on everything that was going on with my sister. And I just had no clue how sick she was, or like even when my parents knew that there was nothing else that doctors could do, like I didn't know, and I didn't know for a while. And so, like I think back to it, and, and I feel like I wasn't supported in the way that I should have been. I guess. Um, when I was eight, and then that following summer, I went to like a camp for siblings of kids with cancer. And, and I remember, like, not, like, there being a switch in my mom when she realized, like, how much of an impact cancer has on, like, the sibling. And me going to that camp and coming home and, like, explaining, like, everything that we talked about and that we learned and that, like, I had friends who felt the same way. And, like, she really started to, like, look, like, try to find advocacy for siblings and, like, really started, like, reading up on, like, and there wasn't much, there still isn't much about like siblings, but talking with other moms. After the diagnosis of a sibling, life can feel like a constant blur of change for well siblings who are often forced to grow up fast. They might experience a wide range of emotions such as anger, jealousy, fear, guilt, worry, and even loneliness. I, I was, like, I experienced jealousy, but it wasn't, like, the magnitude of my feelings. Like, I felt guilty and then, like, just felt like I had to, like, be strong and, like... I feel like I was always more worried. And, um, like I said, like, you just grow up really fast and you feel worried all the time. And... I also had a ton of anger, just why, why this, why is this happening? And that kind of thing, just confusion, and was just kind of mentally unstable a lot of the time, I think. And I'm like, the I was so jealous. Like, I, and I remember being like, I could die. Like, what if I died and you weren't there? Like, I literally did not understand, like, how intense it was. And specifically, it was cool to be sick, and I wanted to be sick. I thought we did. I was sick, and like, I had to be in the hospital. And it was the most I had seen my parents in years. Oh, and like, I was in heaven eating like hospital food. Like, right. it's gross. Yeah, I think there's like, because I've sort of like grown up surrounded by siblings um, of kids with cancer, like, I found that there's like two ends of the spectrum where pe kids are either like worried all the time and they're just like taking on this huge burden that a kid should not be taking on, like, just being like another little mom or like doing all or like how I was where I was like so jealous. One time my mom could get away to take me, um, pick me up from school and we got some dinner and she was dropping me off at the dance studio and she never got to go and do that. And she was like, I have to go back up like your brother you know, needs me tonight. And I remember saying like, he has doctors and nurses to take care of him. I need you tonight. 